In this tutorial we're going to learn to work with Articulate Storyline slider feature. Here's an example of a slider. What we have is a category called Employee Health. And employee Health can be low or high and that can impact the organization. So as I move the slider I can see that low health causes absenteeism to go up, performance goes down, and the cost to the employer goes up. And then the opposite is true as I move the employee health slider to high. So this is a great way for the learner to see a cause and effect relationship between different pieces of information. Now in this example, we have the moon phases. So this is a little bit different because we're not comparing information. I'm just using the slider to show some different information. So in this case, I can learn about the waning moon phases. And then I can slide through and learn about the waxing moon phase. So there are a lot of neat things that you can do with sliders. We'll go to a blank slide, insert a slider, and see what we can do. And then in the next tutorial we'll actually build out this moon phase interaction. We're going to start with the blank slide. Let's insert a slider. So go to Insert, choose Controls, and then you can see you have three sliders you can choose. We'll choose this one. And just draw it on the screen. At this point it's just like any other object that you have in Storyline. So you can move it, you can name it on the timeline, you can change the colors, whatever you want to do with it. We're going to look up here at the toolbar. You'll notice that there's a slider tools and there's two tabs. First tab is called Design. The Design tab is where we set how the slider is going to work. And then the Format tab is where we can determine how the slider is going to look. So let's go ahead and look at the Design tab. So by default, when you create a slider, Storyline is going to create a variable. And the reason Storyline does that is because a slider is always attached to a variable. And the idea of the slider is that you're sliding the slider back and forth. And when you do that, you adjust the value of a variable. And then based on the value of the variable, you're able to do other things in your course. And that'll all make sense when we start doing the activities. So you have a variable that's assigned to it by default. Or you can just assign your own variable by clicking on the drop down. Down here you can determine when the variable is being updated. So when it's being dragged or after it's released. And then over here you can set the range for that variable. So in this case the starting range is 0 and the ending range is 10. So uh, the variable can be adjusted from 0 to 10 based on this slider. And then you'll see we can set our initial value. I'm going to set it at 5. When I click away you can see it puts the thumb here in the middle of the track. So if I click back I'm going to set it back to 0. And then the way the steps work is that we have a range of 0 to 10. And so if you think of it like tick marks you have 10 potential tick marks. So the steps are do I want this to move every single tick mark. So that would be 1, 2, 3 all the way to 10. Or in this case maybe I want it to move every second tick mark. So it's going to only jump over every two tick marks. So if we click that you can see it's only doing every two. If I change this to every five, then it's only going to jump every fifth one. So we can see how that works. So you can create your steps, you can create your values, or all sorts of things that you can do. We're going to set this back to one. Now if we look at the formatting options, this is just like any other shape that you have in Storyline. So with the sliders we have two parts. There's a thumb. And there's your track. And you can see we have some custom thumb styles and we have some custom track styles. So you can choose for that as a starting point. And then you can customize it like any other shape. You can change the colors, the borders, and the effects. And you can do the same thing here with the tracks. Now when you look down here you'll notice that uh, you have two yellow boxes. One of these I can click and that lets me change the size of my thumb. And the other one lets me change the size of my track. So I can customize it in all sorts of ways. Let's go ahead and build a simple interaction using the slider so you can see how the sliders and variables work together. So I'm going to move the slider down. And we'll insert a character on the screen. So let's do that. So here's our character. I'm going to crop her and make her head a little bit bigger so we can see her. She looks really nice on the screen. Okay. What we want to do is when we move the slider we want to change her expression. So these characters have built-in expressions and we can just trigger a change of the state of the character to those built-in expressions. Let's do this. When we're over here we want her to be angry. In the center we want it neutral like this. And at this end we want her to be happy. So what we need to do is set up our slider. So I'll click on that. 
that opens up the tool. So we'll click on the Design tab. And so what we want to do is slider 1 is the variable. And we want the range to be 1 to 3. So then when we click on the slider we can see we've got these stops here. And then what we want to do is when this is at 1 we want her to be angry. When it's at 2 we want her to be neutral. And when it's at 3 we want her to be happy. So let's go ahead and set the triggers. So we're going to come up and create our first trigger. We need to talk through the triggers. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? I want to change the state of this character to an expression when the slider moves. So change the state of the character to, and we'll say to angry, when, if you scroll down you see when the slider moves, we choose our slider. And then the condition is going to be when it's equal to, and we'll say 1. So what we have is a trigger that says change the state of the character to angry when the slider moves and it's equal to 1. And so when the slider moves we know that the variable slider 1 is changing because that's what we have assigned here in our properties. So let's see what happens when we preview this. So you can see now one thing we notice it started here. Let's start it in the center and then let's set the other triggers. So we're going to come over here and we'll set our initial value at 2. And then let's create our other triggers. Now this is the power of Storyline. These other triggers are going to be exactly the same. They're just going to have different values, right? So let me select my trigger. I'm going to copy it and I'll paste it. So in this case what I want to do is I want to change the character to neutral when the slider is equal to 2. And then let's click away. We'll paste it again. And we're going to change it to happy when the slider is equal to 3. So now what we should have is a slider activity that I can say this is how I feel or maybe this is how the customer feels based on an interaction. So when I move it 1, 2, 3, and you can see how the slider works. It's a very simple interaction but you can see that how the slider triggers work. Normally when you're working with variables you have to do three things. You have to create the variable. Storyline does that for you with the sliders. You have to adjust the variable. The slider adjusts the variable for you. And then you have a trigger that does something based on the value of the variable. So when you're working with variables without the sliders you've got to create a trigger to adjust the variable. And then you have to create a trigger to use that variable when it reaches a certain value. With the move slider trigger that saves us a few steps, right? Because we just have to, if we double click on this, we just have to do our action when the slider moves and then set the properties for that. So that speeds things up. Let me show you one other thing. I'm going to delete the character here. You can customize these sliders. So in this case, let's go ahead and change the format. I'm going to change this to one of these little markers here. We'll make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to make my slider invisible, my track. So I'm going to no, no fill and we'll do no outline. So the slider still works. It's just got, um, you just can't see it. Now I'm going to insert my own photo. So we have this ruler image and what we want to do is put the slider on top of the ruler. So instead of using the slider track that comes with Storyline, I can create my own slider track. So I'm just going to move the slider up here. And then I need to, let's, We've got a 0 to 12 value. So let's adjust the slider. So we're going to come to the Design tab. This, we've got 0. We've got 12. We'll just set it to 6 to start so it's in the middle. And then what we need to do is just make sure um, that everything's set right. So let's click on the slider. Let's set it to 0 so we can nudge our slider into place. And we're going to come over here and set it to 12. And that looks pretty good. And then you'll notice now when I drag it, it drags at every inch spot. So now I can take this here and I'm going to move this ruler to the bottom. And so now if we preview this, instead of using the track that comes with Storyline, I can create my own track. So in this case I might want to say measure something on the ruler and then you'll get some sort of value that you can use in your course. So a lot of neat things you can do with the sliders. You can customize them. Uh, you can change the values. And it's really easy working with those triggers. 
In the next tutorial, we're actually going to build out that moon phase activity. That'll give you a little bit more practice. And then it's just a matter of you figuring out how you want to use sliders and then using those in your next e-learning course.